So why the best programmers are broke? And one of the main things is, so basically, you know, I'm talking about the people who have been coding, let's say for 30 years, and their rate is $30 an hour. And I know that because I actually had a few coding tutors or mentors that I had hired and I was working with, and that was the rate they were charging. And I uh, worked very closely with them for a few uh, for a few years actually. And uh, I I was looking at so I had one mentor who was essentially broke, <laughs> who was a great coder with thirty years of experience, making thirty dollars an hour. Then I had another mentor who had, you know, only few years of coding experience, but then he was charging hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars an hour as a Python consultant. He even had clients who he charged three hundred dollars an hour as a Python consultant. And that's what made me, you know, start thinking about, okay, hmm, you can have somebody who has 15, 13, 30 years of experience, and you can have somebody who has less experience and are actually less Hot, you know, less good coders. They're not as good as somebody else who has 30 years of experience. But how are they, when it comes to the pay, so different? Like, what is the difference? They live in the same country. They live in the same state. They live in the same city. They have room to apply to the same pool of jobs. So what's with the disparity? Why is one guy making five times as much and the other guy making five times as less? Why does it take one person to do in five years what it takes the other person to do in one year? Why does it take one person to do in two years what it takes the other person to do in 10 years? What the hell is the difference? So here's what, in my opinion, what the difference is. It's a lot of self-limiting belief that people put on themselves, okay? And it's a lot of, here's, here's what the most important thing that I think people overlook. 85% of your financial success, and listen to this very carefully, and if you're watching this live stream, here's what I suggest. Bring, um, bring some notes with you, bring a notepad, and take some notes, all right? Write down what I'm saying, and this will really, really help you. 85% of your financial success comes from your personal likability, your interpersonal skills, your people skills, your negotiation skills, all right? And the other 15% of your financial success comes from your technical skills. How crazy is that? And this is, this is according to Carnegie Mellon University. They did a research and that's what they put out. And I think it's true. It's the 80-20 rule, 85-15 in this case. But that's really what it is. Quality of work, of course it matters. Your dedication, of course it matters. Your time, of course it matters. But how come the dude who's put 30 years into coding and literally codes every single day, has eye bags underneath his eyes, doesn't even change his shirt. Like this guy literally was my mentor and I hope he's not watching it. Um, and I love him to death, but he literally wore a blue hoodie every single session we've ever had, okay? And like had crazy eye bags under his eyes. And he was the best coder I've literally ever seen. Okay, this guy was like a wizard. He'd been coding since he was five years old and he'd been coding all the way through and his work experience was 30 years. So imagine that you've been coding from five, since you were five years old and then you also have professional job experience for 30 years. So he was probably coding for over 40 years. Okay, yet that was his hourly rate. And again, you know, why is money important? A lot of people are like, why are you talking about money? Why do you bring up money so much? 
Here's why. Because I care about you being able to support yourself, but not only that, you being able to support your family and your friends, okay, those around you. Um, this was something I kind of figured out or it happened to me and I had this realization a while ago um, and I've told this story where my mom got an accident and I couldn't afford her surgery. Like literally our family couldn't afford her surgery. So for 12 years, like she just kept being in agonizing pain and me feeling helpless was the moment for me where I realized that I only need a little bit of money to be happy and I just need to eat food and that's pretty much it and I'll be like good. But I need to have more for other people around me and not just enough for myself because I think that's selfish to just have enough for yourself. So now going back to the two programmers, right? One making 30 and the other making like 200 an hour. That's literally one person's one year of work is equal to the other person's six years of work. So you're saving yourself a lot of time, which gives you freedom. You're obviously making good money, so you get paid what you deserve. You're not overworked and underpaid, and you can help out everybody else around you. And also, you're, like I said, you have that freedom, and that freedom is what we really want, right? That's what we're ultimately looking for. And here's what I like about it the most. When you're getting compensated well for your time, you end up having a lot of extra free time. And now with that time, you can choose to put in a lot more work, maybe even build a business on the side or work on really cool coding projects like nerd out, whatever, but you could work on your own things. And that's the freedom that I like, you know, for example, if you're charging, let's say, let's say you're happy with making $2,000 a month. Okay. Let's just talk about some practical math. Now, let's say you're happy and you enjoy making $2,000 a month and you figured out that that's what would keep you happy. You could be working 40 hours to make, you could be working 40 hours a week to make your $2,000 a month. So let's say you could be working 160 hours a month to be making your uh, $2,000. Or instead of working 160 hours a month, how about if you had a higher uh, hourly rate that you charged, how about you worked for only 40 hours and made $2,000? How about instead of your work week being 40 hours long, your work week was 10 hours long and you get 30 hours extra. Now you could take that extra 30 hours and put it towards work and now instead of working 10 hours, you're working 40 hours, but your income, instead of it being 2000, it's now $8,000. That's one thing you could do. The other thing you could do with that 30 hours is literally start going to the gym. That time you complain, you don't have enough hours in a day to spend with your family, friends, or your girlfriend, whatever, take care of that. I don't know. The third thing is enjoy your life. Like, travel, go to different places, go to different states, go to different countries, see what is going on in the world, check out different cultures. It's unlimited what you could do with that time. So that's why it's important to understand and calculate what your earning potential could look like. So you have this clear map, because most people, what you what we do is we just apply to lots and lots and lots of jobs. And then the first one that comes to us, we just accept that. Um, and it can even be like some really crappy opportunity. And then we just go from there. Right. And then we just go day by day, not thinking about what we're doing. We work, we come home, we watch Stranger Things or House of Cards. And there's nothing wrong with that if you're watching it from a place of just enjoying it. But most of the times our lives are so hectic that we literally need to numb the pain by watching some stuff to keep our minds off of the pressure and the headaches and all the problems. So we come home from nine to five, a job that we uh, we're like, mm, it's OK, I'm not really feeling it. We spend the rest of the time maybe watching a show or something and then we sleep and then we rinse and repeat and go through life like zombies. And then we look back and we're like, 
I have an average job that pays an average income. I have, you know, either a partner in life or I maybe don't even have a partner in life. I'm physically in just an okay shape, if not poor shape. And I wish I could do a lot of the things differently. And then as soon as that thought creeps into your mind, what do you do? Boom, back to Netflix, back to watching the TV, back to watching your favorite reality show, back to calling that best friend that just makes you feel comfortable and feel good. And you guys just eat cookies together and you guys just like hang out together and eat ice cream together. And both of you try not to remind each other of where were the places where you could have really succeeded and pushed yourself and had that tapped into that potential that you know that you kind of had. So again, it's important to understand that and uh, not go down that path. Okay, just have always have that in the back of your head. And like I say, your true friends are not the ones who make you feel comfortable or cuddly or just enjoying yourself. Those are people you can, I mean, honestly, hire. Just hire a therapist or something. Just pay them hourly. They'll listen to your problems. They'll make you feel nice and cushy. They'll make you feel cozy. It'll be great. If you make money, you can just hire them. That's it. That's the type of friends I see a lot of people have. Just, just always trying to make each other feel as comfortable as possible, only to then later look back at their life and then regret it. I honestly think a true friend is somebody who pushes you and makes you feel uncomfortable. Not all the time, but at times calls you out. And it's okay if they make you feel a little uncomfortable, but enough to challenge you so you can push yourself forward in, in your income, in your uh, financial success, in your uh, relationships, in your, you know, your body, your fitness, in your emotional health, your mental health, whether you do meditation or whatever it is. In every aspect of life, you should be around people who push you forward and truly care for you. That's what it means for somebody to truly care for you, like they watch out for you, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah, Netflix Netflix is too expensive for some, some of us, jaunty. So again, when you're working on those little apps on the side and you're freelancing, you could be making that extra income and then just pay off that Netflix, pay off um, your Hulu subscriptions, pay off going to movies, pay off those fancy dinner dates, pay off your phone bills, pay off all these annoying little things that nag at you. And even if you, you're not ready to make that full jump yet, you could be doing this on the side and save yourself time and just be making that extra income to give yourself that breathing room, okay?